More and more Australians are abandoning our struggling public health system and jetting off overseas for a dose of surgery with a holiday in the sun and sand. It started some years ago with cheap cosmetic surgery, but today it's everything from hip and knee replacements to major dental work for about a third of the cost. And there's not a queue in sight. But is it really worth the risk? Rani Sadler with this report. Phuket, Thailand, suntans, swimsuits and sightseeing blending right in 24 Australians. Yeah, I want to get high heels for me and I want to get some dresses or shirts. But this is no ordinary holiday. The twist is in the souvenirs. Breast implants and teeth whitening. New boobs and my ear fixed. Boob job and dental work. It's the future because it's cheaper you're getting what you want out of it. You don't have to weigh. New implants and lift. Dental work. <laughs> Porcelain crowns. Root canal on my teeth. When you do say to people, I said that me and Alicia were coming to Thailand to get surgery, their mouths just drop and they just think you are weird. Don't do it. You're going to come back with no teeth. You're going to come back sick. Oh the God. hospitals are probably better in a, here than they are in Australia. It's all about yourself, isn't it? Like, if you've got to wait three years at home to get an operation, we come here, you know, and it's better for you to have it done quicker, well, why don't you come here? I'll see you upstairs in an hour and a half. This year, we're starting to see much larger groups come through. Some people can't pay the expensive uh, costs of Australian surgery. Some people can't wait one and a half years, two years on a waiting list. They need to consider other choices. And by considering a place like Thailand, they have a choice. We have about 50 doctors working with us. Peter Davison is a former Tasmanian paramedic. He now runs medical tourism at Phuket International Hospital. But this would be one of our popular ones, the new IVF fertility centre, right. which we opened about one year ago. Yeah. Very, very popular with Australians. We are now essentially full. We have to build a new plastic surgery department. We're building a new hospital uh, wing. Uh, and all of these things we've had to bring on fast track because of the increase in demand. To dental work, to orthopaedic surgery, general surgery, very popular with Australians, particularly things like total hip replacements, total knee replacements. It's far cheaper here to have a procedure done. And I think that for some extended procedures, people are waiting on Australian waiting lists for up to a year, maybe even two years to get in to have a procedure done. What are the waiting lists here? We would normally be able to do a procedure within one week of being uh, accepting a client. And for a growing number of Australians, that's a big deal and a big relief. Almost all our medical tourists are getting dental work in Thailand. Three years ago, the hospital employed three dentists. Now it has 13. And that speaks volumes about the failures of the Australian system. There are many, many Australians who require dental work, but the system cannot provide it for them. At this dental clinic in Patong Beach, 90% of the patients are Aussies. When was the last time you went to the dentist? Uh, about 28 years ago. Just, they're too dear. Donna Seddon and daughter Alicia are having a family medical holiday. One's a bit tender that I got the lift on, but yeah. Three days ago, Alicia had breast implant surgery. Tomorrow, Donna's getting a new smile. Her front teeth were worn down, the nerves exposed. Donna, what would have happened to you had you not been able to come to Thailand to fix your teeth? I probably would have left them the way they were till they all fell out and I had to get falsies. And what do you think it'll look like afterwards? Oh, brilliant, I hope. <laughs> Last year, two million Australians put off getting their teeth fixed because of the cost. 400,000 are on public dental waiting lists. Donna didn't have to wait at all. Oh, very good. What's the AMA's position on medical tourism? Really? Well, we don't think it's something to be encouraged. Normally, in an Australian hospital, there's extensive counselling and often psychological evaluation to make sure that the person is uh, making the right decision for themselves. Because once you have that surgery, there's no going back. Professor Brian Owler says the risks of going offshore for surgery just aren't worth it. 
If you were an 80-year-old and you had to be on the waiting list for two years for a new hip, you can understand why someone would want to go overseas. I can, and it is a risk, though. That's the problem. I think uh, they're, they're taking a gamble when they go overseas to, to undergo some of these types of surgeries. And I think what we need to do and what I've been advocating for for many years is to try and get uh, a better access for public patients in our public hospitals and try and reduce the waiting lists. I'm getting seven or possibly eight fillings. Pretty bad. <laughs> Okay. Ready. Fixing her teeth one day. It's happening. Checking into hospital for breast implants the next. Amy Slick is 20, a restaurant manager who lives in Mackay. I'm Dr. Rashapon, 43 years old. Yes, I'm ready to take care of your breast. I'm getting measured. Did you or anyone you know have any concerns about you coming here? I was one of those girls with the opinion before I did my research. I was like, are you sure Phuket's safe? Like, are you sure? I was one of those girls. But then when I heard more and more people doing it and going over there, that's when I was like, oh, well, maybe I should do my research. And that's when I decided to go here. Okay. What made you feel like you needed breast augmentation? <laughs> um, basically, I've because I'm so skinny, I'm very flat-chested too. <laughs> This is the fun part, this is where you get to have a look. I guess when you're flat chested, it's um, cool. it's quite hard to have a lot of self-confidence in yourself and you're always feeling very, um, like people are just like, oh, you know, you shouldn't go anything. My heart is like literally beating like a thousand times a minute. <laughs> Far out, here I go. Goodbye, little boobies. <laughs> The next morning I find Amy top heavy and on top of the world. Once the bandages get taken off and I can start to learn how to massage them and stuff, I think they will definitely feel like they're mine. So I basically got my t seven fillings done, uh, my breasts done, uh, all my shopping done, the flights here and back, and my dinner all for probably about $6,000. Wow, which wouldn't have even got you the um, breast implants in Australia. No. I hope you don't think it's rude, but uh, how much did it cost? Um, it's cost me $12,000. For everything? For the operation, yeah. Um, how much would that cost you in Australia? Oh, between twenty-eight and 34000 This was 62-year-old Wendy Williams two nights ago, before her operation. Mm -hmm. She had an eye lift in Australia years ago, but this is her first surgery overseas. It's no good looking in the mirror and going, oh, God, I wish I didn't have these wrinkles, I didn't have this, I didn't have that. So I'm going to fight the age bit all the way along. Her surgery included a neck, eye and facelift, as well as bone scraping on her forehead. She spent six hours under the knife. Yes, I think it looks fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. The next day, it's a little painful as the bandages come off. But the wrinkle in the forehead, gone. Of the 24 medical tourists on this trip, none had any complaints or reported any complications. All right, you want to have a look? When you see the, the improvement, uh, just the, the forehead that has uh, a lot less wrinkle, I would say that it is 100% correction. What do you think? I think that looks fantastic. You'd definitely come back? I would for plastic surgery, yes. Wendy before and after. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're really nice. I love the shape. <laughs> yeah, yours are nice and squishy. Mine is still recovering, though. <laughs> As the medical holiday winds up, it's show and tell. <laughs> like yours, we feel? We can. Wow. I want oh, mine like that. You're amazing. <laughs> it's like Wait me too long. Wait me too long. Won't be too long. That's good. <laughs> Yay, I have boobs. <laughs> I can't wait to put my swimmers on and lay out at the beach. I'll be going there more often actually now. I didn't go there at all in summer to the beach, not once. And your boyfriend's been really supportive. He's really excited actually. He's um been I bet he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Ronnie Sadler there. And if you want more information, there's an interview with the tour operated we followed on our website. After the break, in Africa with Kerry Ann Kennelly and the wildest rescue you've ever seen. These are southern white rhino. They need help more than any other animal. This is the way to go. We've got four animals left to rescue a whole species. <laughs> it was a real buzz. We have the power. What right have we got to make anything go extinct? 